The funniest thing about this company is the fact that the two biggest threats to it actually come from members within. Yeah, sure, there's no technically John Smith a part of the company, but uh, we all know Sid. We all know Shadow and his secret identities, and him absolutely destroying Shadow Garden. I mean, only three members, sure, but still, went about as well as you would expect. But I think the biggest catastrophe actually comes from Gamma, who is without a doubt the best worst bodyguard ever, because everyone collectively understands you don't want to have to be the babysitter of her, because she's going to trip, she's going to fall, and she's going to cause such chaos and destruction, and while yes, she gets the job done, the damage to that company building said it all, and I think that is the most Eminence and Shadow thing ever, and I absolutely love it. Full live reaction to today's episode over on my Patreon if you would like to see that. It's over there if you're interested. Now, the funny thing about Sid as a character is, while yes, there are technically as many misunderstandings towards Sid as Sid has towards pretty much anyone else. I think it's so funny when you think about just his hunger for money, retirement. I mean, if we rewind, it was earlier into season one. It was when he first went to the department store. He was basically acting like he needed to steal from them, like, oh, they're stealing my ideas. I, I deserve a little pocket change. Like, he could have asked for the entire vault of gold and they would have given it to him, but he has no idea, right? And I think the idea of like the fake money and the counterfeit bills and his entire plan, it's just, it's so funny when you think of the fact that his entire like desire is to just be the best chuny ever, have his retirement fund and not have to deal with bullshit half the time. And he could just ask for whatever he wants and he could get it. But you gotta love Sid and his extra way of doing things because when John Smith comes in, and this was pointed out to me last week, I had no idea this was a thing. He wears his mask upside down. So the nose part, which is kind of like the beak part, points upwards. And it's not a once accidental thing. Every scene with John Smith, he wears his mask upside down. And the funniest thing about that is it perfectly represents Sid as a character. No one would ever correct Sid because they would assume Sid would just tell them something and they'd be like, wow, that's like, actually, there's a better way to wear it. I never understood. But also, Sid has no damn idea. It's almost guaranteed. He's just like, yeah, this, this works. This makes sense. And him just coming in, stringing up the ladies, and just throwing them off that train was about as well as it would have went for them, all things considered. Because there, there's one thing that we can say about Sid, whether he's in shadow form or he's in John Smith mass form, is he is a tank and he is built different. And it's kind of exciting because there's a lot of possibilities with John Smith versus Shadow Guard. And this was just like, I'm not even sure if I'd call this the appetizer, but it definitely was the bitch get off the train moment. And honestly, I'm excited to see what they do because that moment it's around the middle portion of the episode when he's talking with the, with the beast lady and she, he's basically like, which one do you think is fake? And they both give completely different answers and just the shock in his face, the shock in her face. I mean, that's pretty much Sid's character in a nutshell and I really enjoy it. But I think my overall favorite point of this episode would have to be the Gamma stuff just because you shouldn't be fighting in high heels to begin with, and especially when you're as clumsy as her. Like, every scene, like, she could be standing still, and you could look away for a second, come back, and she's basically in doggy style with a bloody nose. And we're like, what the hell did she do? How did she hurt herself? And how does anyone put up with her? But you will, and you gotta admit, she is an effective bodyguard, but she has so much collateral damage that you have to wonder, uh... Maybe it's better to keep her leashed up because it took like two or three attempts of her begging Alpha to go deal with this. And she's like, eh, I'm just going to pretend like I didn't hear that. And the first time, okay, you trip, you fall, whatever. We'll we'll, we'll brush that off as sure, we'll, we'll give her that one. And every time, two or three times in this fight, she just acts like this poor bastard who's breaking in is basically like doing some crazy things. And she is so powerful, like, she lacks skill in terms of, like, professionalism. Like, her idea of swordplay is rapid thrust movements and just basically just acting like... It's kind of like if, if, it, if a child had the strength of the Hulk. Like, the child's just swinging that sword around. This, the child has no idea what the hell it's doing, but if it has the strength of the Hulk, there's a very likely chance that you will be caught up in the crossfire, and that's exactly what happened. And with the last trip, the sword falling into that dude's neck and just blowing him apart. I mean, it's just one of those moments where it's like, you just feel for any character who has to deal with her nonsense because 
there isn't enough pay, there isn't enough mental stability to deal with a character like this for a day, let alone have to be her personal bodyguard, and not even a bodyguard to protect her, but more so the bodyguard to protect everyone else from the collateral damage, that's the eminence in Shadow for you. Like, in a way, this actually kind of felt like a setup style episode, kind of getting the ball moving. There's a lot of different pieces at play here, whether it is the currency situation, the counterfeit bills and everything. But we also have different sides now, right? It's not just simply Sid and Shadow making moves anymore. It's Sid, Shadow, and even John Smith. And in doing so, Shadow Garden and the people targeting Shadow Garden, everything like that, there's a lot of moving pieces and it's almost impossible to predict exactly where things are going to land by the end. I mean, they showed us a, a very nice vault. I mean, that was a lot of gold. And I mean, knowing Sid, he would take the coins. He would just put it in a slime and basically that's that would be his plan right there because ultimately the practical use of it, he doesn't want to, have to melt it down, do anything. No, he just wants to spend his money and be able, be able to do whatever he wants. And that moment when he's getting food and he has like the two bills out before then giving the coin. I just love this stuff, man. There's just, you can just honestly probably mute an episode of Eminence and Shadow and there's probably at least 40% of the episode that would probably be enjoyable and you could pick apart what's happening. Just because the faces say it all. Like, characters basically like, God damn it, is she actually doing this? Or just Sid's friends in the background goofing off. It's just such a fun show, man. Like, I think I said it within, when I was covering season one. It's easily the type of East guy that you could casually watch for 100 episodes and probably not grow bored just because there's so much chaos. You have great action. You have interesting powers. You have political stuff or even just the idea of how currency can be evolving and changing about, you know, storing money here, getting this back, and, you know, the idea of value and when that loses value, when people realize that what they're passing around is actually worth nothing, right? There's a lot of interesting things, but rather than making anything dry or boring, like, especially when you consider the fact that this arc is all dealing about currency, that isn't everyone's cup of tea. Like, some people will find that interesting. I'm kind of in the middle. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. In this case, it's just, it's fun because we're dealing with Shadow Garden and all the nonsense that goes along with it. I do hope at least at one point someone mentions the mass and we do get the conversation with Sid basically having to navigate through that this is just the proper way to wear it or from maybe a different culture or something. I don't know, but I like the idea that even when you think you are like absolutely enjoying everything it wants you to, people can point out the silliest things and it just makes the enjoyment of characters like John Smith all the more. Now those are just my feelings on this week's Eminence and Shadow episode. Definitely had some fun content. I think they definitely get your mind excited with more John Smith potentially versus Shadow Garden, but uh, best worst bodyguard. That's probably the nicest way to put it and I wouldn't have it any other way. But let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. Like I mentioned, we have a full live reaction over on my Patreon if you're interested. And hey, while you're there, you also get a video shout out. So today, we have John Slam, Lee, Call Wedge, Six Ray, Man Woman, and Dave. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.